today uh, we want to find the transverse deflection at point 1 which is this point due to application of load at point 2 which is this point in the cantilever beam so here uh, we are assuming pure bending so we are given a cantilever beam so we are assuming pure bending so whatever the energy loads or stresses whatever it is it is due to bending only so we want to find if we apply load here but look to what would be the deflection uh, what would deflection at point one which is located at distance x so the best way to do this is by using Maxwell's reciprocal theorem that is if we have uh, a load at point two and we want to find the deflection at point where we use the influence number alpha one two where alpha one two is the deflection at point one onto load two this by maximum stress proposition it states that it is equal to alpha two one this is the deflection at point two into load one so in this case we don't have any thing particular about point one okay to relate point one to point two what we got with Lewis uh, as the um, influence number is defined for unit load we'll consider a unit load at point one and we'll calculate the influence number and then as these two influence numbers or cross influence numbers are the same it will be very easy to find the deflection point one due to load point two so here I've just represented a schematic diagram here I have, a, I have this beam which is getting loaded by this load P here so if I transfer this load to this point the beam will deflect to a point delta 1 so obviously the beam will also have a curvature which is represented by theta so the additional deflection of point 2 will be theta times x so this will be the net deflection that is the net deflection at point 2 is equal to delta 1 plus theta times x that's what we have to find out after finding this out we can find out the influence number so for that how to do this we use strain energy method so for strain energy method what we do is we have um, this distance is l minus x so the amount of energy due to application of this load p to this load p uh, can be written as um, integral 0 to l l minus x that is m square is m square here is m is equal to p into x that is at 42 distance x and here i can see that there is a redundancy but i will continue with it uh, here i am not i am ignoring this section i am entirely ignoring this section correctly and i am applying a load p here I'm considering a moment at this section so P into x is the moment into dx. So we will get uh, p square l cube by 6 ei. Substituting, we will get p square l minus x by 4 cube by 6 ei. So deflection at point 1 can be found, found out by just differentiating uh, the load, the strain energy with respect to the load, which is classically known as uh, first theorem. First theorem, we will get the deflection. So next is we have to find the angular deflection, that is the curvature of the point one. 
So for that, we have theta is dy by dx is equal to integral over m by e i dx. This is from the structure equation. That is b square y by dx square m by e i and the derivation of flexure equation we assume that the curvature theta is equal to theta by x that's how we get the flexure equation so thus curvature is dy by dx we obtain by integrating the flexure equation once so thus we get m by e i into t applying the limits and integrating uh, the same thing integrating we will get p into n minus x over square by 2 e i as I mentioned earlier, the deflection at point 2 was can be found by delta 1 plus theta x. Yes. We just substitute these things. We will we'll get p by 6 e i into 1 minus x whole square into 12 plus x. Please note through this um, integration uh, no, addition and I'm just grouping the terms. So this is delta 2 due to a load p at point 1 deflection of point 2 due to load at point 1 so if i apply a unit load we'll have one here and that will that will be the influence number alpha 2 one. that is uh, deflection at point 2 due to application of load 1 and a unit load at point 1 so you can see that this is the same as inference number at point 1 due to load at point 2. That's delta 1 or deflection point 1 is p times delta 1 to the same thing. So this concludes the solution.